Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. Today I wanted to film a video about my spring and summer knitting plans and I brought a tub of all the yarn that I'm going to be using for these plans and yeah originally I was going to film a stash tour this weekend but I went through first I went through my summer like my summer yarns summer and spring yarns and I got a little bit overwhelmed just doing this part of my stash, let alone I still have like, I think there's eight bins here, some more yarn up there, and then I have yarn at my place as well, so it was just a little bit too overwhelming um, for now. I'm still hoping to do like a stash organization or stash tour later this year, maybe towards the fall. But in any case, what I wanted to talk about today were my spring and summer knitting plans. And I'm going to jump right into it with the first item being something that I've already cast on. And my, so my first plan for spring and summer is the Roving Summer Wrap by Irene Lynn. And I am currently knitting this out of a cone of yarn that I picked up at Knit City a couple of years ago. And I got it from the Kensington Prairie Farms booth. And it is 65% organic cotton and 35% alpaca. So this is the cone. It's pretty hefty. I think the weight on it... Oh, I forgot to weigh it before I started, but I'll weigh my project after it's done. But uh, yeah, I've had this cone for a long time and I initially intended it for another project for a sweater, but then I was like, oh no, cotton and alpaca probably wouldn't make for a very well-structured sweater and so when I was looking at all my summer and spring plans and I saw the roving summer wrap I thought that would be the perfect use of this yarn and so what I have so far is just the beginnings I'm still doing all of the increases I think I've got another 16 rows before I split the sleeves off but this is what it's looking for so or looking like so far and it's going to be a really long, like it's uh, long in length. And I think it's, it just looks super cute. And I feel like this color, like just a natural kind of like off white color would be really good for the spring and summer. And I figure it would be more of a piece to wear later in the evenings. Like when this, when it starts getting warmer, because I, because of the alpaca content, I feel like it's going to have a little bit of warmth and it might be a little bit prickly like when I get when my skin gets warmer I'm more likely to feel like the I guess it's the the guard hairs or whatever it is that's in the alpaca that makes it feel a little bit prickly but yeah this is what it's looking like so far super excited about it so I've been working on it a little bit I cast it on a couple days ago and I've been working on it on and off between other projects but yeah, I'm excited for that because I wanted, I think it was a couple years ago, I crocheted like a, it's sort of like a dress, more like a bathing suit cover up, like a beach cover up kind of thing. And I wanted, I kind of regretted the color that I made it in. It was kind of like a blue. Actually, I have the yarn, the leftover yarn in here from it. And I thought, well, I, I'm more likely to wear lighter colors. Like my shirt today is a cotton and linen shirt. And I really like this color on me and I feel like if I was to wear a bathing suit and like go to the lake or the beach or whatever, having this color of a cover up would be nice over my bathing suit. But yeah, so that that's my, my first plan, uh, which is on the needles and then everything else that I'm planning is, I'm gonna, I think I have it in order of when I want to cast it on. I don't have specific dates yet for when I want to cast these on, but over the next what is this? April, May, June, July. Over the next three to four months, I want to cast on and complete, I think there's 11 more projects, 12 in total. So, um, yeah, this is my bin. I collected all of my cotton, linen, lace, um, anything that kind of has, that would suit warmer weather garments, I suppose. Originally, I wasn't going to knit any summer garments because I wasn't Last year, I wasn't totally feel. I mean, I really liked my my t-shirts that I made, 
but everything else was kind of, I don't know, I wasn't like super happy with them. So this year I'm, I've done a lot of planning. All right. Okay, so let's start with the first thing I want to cast on, well, the next thing I want to cast on is a dress and it is called called Vilna and it is by Natalie Pelik. Pelik? And I'm planning on knitting that out of, well, of course it's all the way at the bottom here. Okay, let me just organize this real quick. Okay, I'm going to be knitting it out of this 100% cotton, um, I think it's non-mercerized, yeah, it's non-mercerized cotton from Maurice Brassard that I got from uh, Fibers West a couple weeks ago. So I got two of these cones, and I think each cone has, um, gosh, I should have written down how much it was. It's, it's basically 227 grams. And I needed two of these to make the dress, so I think there was probably like 900 yards or meters on each one of these. So I just got it in this natural cotton color. And again, I guess there's like kind of a theme going on because now I've got the roving summer wrap as well. But this dress I'm really excited about. I believe it's a, uh, you work it from the bottom up. And on the back of the dress, there's uh, there are lace details on the bottom and the top. And on the back of the the top back of the dress there's a little button panel or panel button so I'm not sure if it's like fake buttons or if it actually has a um, an actual button placket I guess is that what it's called like a button band where you actually button it up and but we'll see when we get there the information on the pattern page didn't seem I don't think it gave me the exact amount of yarn that I needed to knit it so I just kind of I'm hoping that between the two of these cones it'll be enough. If anything, I can just adjust the length because right now, or as it is, it's kind of like a full length, almost like a maxi dress. Um, so I can always make it shorter if I'm going to run out of yarn. I figure I'd knit the first, as much as I can from the bottom to my waist. And then on the if I reach the next cone, then, then I'll knit from the rest up. Or like if from the bottom to my waist takes one cone, then I'll stop there and then do the other cone or start the other cone so yeah so these are my two cones yeah super excited I, I haven't I haven't knit a dress I well like yeah I crocheted that sort of dress thing last no two years ago um, so it'll be really interesting to knit a full dress like a full summer dress I'm really excited that's gonna be the next thing I cast on because that I imagine is gonna take me a much longer to knit I believe it is worked in the round up until like you split here and you work front and back but so it should go pretty quick once I get past the lace panel or like the lace part on the bottom it's just straight stockinette and yeah so I'm really looking forward to that the designer um, Natalie Pellick uh, she has some really nice really nice patterns like I've I have favorited a number of her patterns and when I was doing my list of summer and spring knits I came across quite a few of them that I wanted to knit but I ha I wanted to settle I didn't want to knit too many things from the same designer and so I I decided to knit the dress because that's what I really want is a dress first and then I think she's got a couple other dress patterns as well but this is the one that stuck out to me to that would suit my aesthetic I suppose um, yeah and okay so my next spring knit is going to be the T number one by my favorite things knitwear and I'm going to be knitting this out of Cascade Eco Hemp I'm not sure if I'm gonna get the correct gauge with this yarn because it's not um, I don't know I want to knit a t-shirt out of this yarn and I feel like T number one is what stuck out to me. Like that's the t-shirt that I want to knit or one of the t-shirts that I want to knit. And so I originally had used this Cascade Eco Hemp in a, the first time I cast on the All of the Lights cardigan and the, the gauge was totally off. It's a lot thinner than a, like I feel like it's not quite a fingering, maybe it's more of a sport weight. 
Oh, here, let me grab a full skein that's in here. I have a bunch of it wound up into cakes and balls because I undid what I had knit. So this is it. The Cascade Eco Hemp. And it's this like heathered um, purple. I think the color was called, what was it called? Does it say? Oh, it's just color number 14. So, uh, but it's like a purple and it's got a heathered effect on it. I imagine it's the hemp that's in here. It is 80% Peruvian Highland wool and 20% hemp. So I figured this would be the next thing I cast on after the dress so that I could wear it in the transition between spring and summer because it is, even though we've had a couple of days recently in like the high teens, like 15 to 18 degrees, there's still going to be some days where it's kind of dark and dreary or just a little bit colder, like 10 degrees and less. Um, so I figure I'd try and cast on this t-shirt so I can at least enjoy a little bit of it before the hot heat of the summer comes in. And I feel like this would make a really, like, I just really like the color of this and the way it works up. When I had initially knitted up in a cardigan, I, I didn't even knit the whole cardigan. I, I split for the sleeves and, or I got separated for the sleeves, tried it on and it was too small. Of course I didn't do a gauge swatch, but so I have a bunch of stuff that's just wound up into balls, but I really like the way that this works up. Um, the way it, yeah, it's just, I really like the heathered effect. So I'm really looking forward to having a t-shirt in this. I'm pretty sure I have more than enough because I had four skeins of this and I think each one is 300 and, 300 and something meters, uh, 300 meters. So three, six, nine, 12. So I've got 1200 meters to knit a t-shirt and I think that should be more than enough. And I'm planning on knitting it oversized as well because I don't want anything. I think the t-shirt T number one is supposed to have positive ease. And yeah, I just don't want, I don't want anything too close to skin, especially because it is 80% wool and 20% hemp. So yeah, so that is that one. That was like project number three. All right, and then the next project is gonna be uh, the outline tee. And that's by Jessie Made Designs. And so I decided, I when I was going through all of my yarn and trying to collect the yarns that uh, at least had some kind of cotton, linen, hemp, silk content. I found that I had two skeins or two cakes, two little cakes of Holstgarn Coast. And this is 55% lamb's wool and 45% cotton. And this is in the colorway black current. And I picked this up at my very first Knit City way back in 2017, I think. Uh, I got this at the Wet Coast Wools booth that was there. Oh, it had to have been 2017 or 2018. 2017, I think. In any case, I am going to knit the outline tee. No, what is it? Yeah, the outline tee by Jessie Made Designs. And one of the cool things about Ravelry that I, I knew that this was a function of Ravelry, but I had never used it before for myself, is that when you, so basically I added all of these yarns to my stash on Ravelry. And then when you go into a, a pattern page, if someone has already used a specific yarn that's from your stash in that project, it'll pop up as like, oh, one project idea or however many project ideas for the amount of yarn that you have. And so when I clicked on the outline T, it said, oh, one project idea or one yarn idea. And so I clicked on it and it said, you know, using Holstgarn and I was like, oh, but maybe I would have to hold it double because it is pretty thin. But then I saw that someone had knit the outline tank or the outline tee in Holstgarn held single. So I was like, I think I can do that. I've got mm, 350 meters times two, so 700 meters. And I think that like, it's supposed to be a cropped tank or sorry, a cropped t-shirt anyway. And so I think, I think I'll be okay. But you see, I kind of have a, oh yeah, the, these are, this is almost the same color as the um, Cascade Eco Hemp. It's, it's got like the uh, kind of heathered look to it, which I really like. So I'm really excited to have essentially two t-shirts in a similar color, but one's going to be like a full t-shirt with like longer sleeves. And I think the outline tee 
is gonna like it's got the drop stitches that go down the front and then it's it's yeah it's more cropped so it'll be more for for the warmer weather and yeah so after that I'm kind of like going in order of like t-shirts and things that look like t like similar kind of style things and then and then I'll start casting on like tank tops and stuff later because t-shirts I'll get more wear out of earlier in the season in the spring to summer transition and then the tank tops will be more for the summer. So the next project I want to cast on is called Prairie Grove and this is a pattern by Samantha Stater and I think I knit I've knit one of her patterns before or possibly two of them. I think the box site was one of them that I knit a couple of years ago and I really liked it. She has you can technically, I think, buy her patterns on Ravelry, or you can go to her blog and get the pattern for free. You just have to deal with all the advertisements on the website. And I think some of these patterns are one size only, so um, depending on your size, you might have to size up or down or do a little bit of math on how to, um, you know, figure it out for your size. Uh, but considering she does offer the patterns for free, I think that's it's nice that it's basically the groundwork is there and if you if you have the capacity to do it and the time to sit down and like measure out the repeats and how many more stitches or less stitches that you would need for your size um yeah I think that's yeah something that you can do in any case um so for that pattern I'm gonna be using which one is this it's called I got this from a D stash from someone who had a lot of unique yarn, I would say. Yarn that I have never heard of or seen from other companies I've never heard of. Um, so the yarn I'm going to use for this is from Infinite and it's called, the yarn itself I think is called Pollyanna. And it is, oh I've got, I've got a nicer tank here for skein. Okay, so that's what it looks like. And then on the ball band, uh, yeah, the ball band just looks like this. And it's a uh, one of a kind, oh shoot, a one of a kind yarn. And it is polyester and flax and silk. So the contents is, oh, does it say, oh, it doesn't say what the, does not say what the percentage is of each one. But it's 500 yards per skein. Yeah. And it's kind of got like, again, it's got sort of a heathered look to it, just ever so slightly. And I'm, yeah, I guess I'm really into the beige and the natural colors. I mean, I do have some funky colors too, but I'm really excited for this. So I've got 500 yards times two. So I've got a thousand yards total. Yeah, a thousand yards total. And the Prairie Grove, I might make some adjustments to it because I'm not sure. I saw some projects where people have omitted the, like picking up for the sleeves and knitting the sleeves. And I think I might do that depending on how, I'm gonna knit the whole thing without the sleeves first, just to see how it fits me. And then decide if I wanna make, if I wanna add the sleeves on like longer or shorter or none at all. And so, um, yeah, I, I feel like I might even, there's like a lace panel that goes across the front, but I don't think it continues on the back. And I'm thinking, actually one of the ideas I had was if I made it cropped, maybe I could get just one out of one, like get a whole top out of one skein of this yarn and basically make it a little bit cropped. So it's like just below my bra line or like, just, I guess like just above my waist. And then what I would do with the lace part is, oh no, I guess the stockinette to here and then the lace to my waist, I suppose. And then I was going to maybe add tassels along the front with the lace. I don't know. Kind of like, kind of in my head, it gives me like those festival vibes, like music festival vibes. Not that I'm going to any music festivals, but I kind of like dig that look. So we'll see how that goes. Um, we'll just, des I'll decide when I, once I finish it and maybe I'll add a couple of tassels just to give it like give an idea or see how it would look and then decide from there. So I'm excited about that. 
um, I think it'd be, it would look really cute over a pair of shorts. So yeah. Okay. So that's, I think that's it for the t-shirts and like t-shirt style garments for the spring and summer. And now I think at this point I'm getting more into summer knits. Uh, I think the, the things that I just talked about were more for like spring and spring summer transition. And now I'm getting into like summer, summer knits. So the next thing I want to knit is the Ilana, Ca uh, Ilana Camisole, and this is by Masha Ziablikova. And what I'm going to knit this one out of, I think, is another cone of yarn from Maurice Brassard. And this is the 2 8 cotton linen, yeah, cotton linen blend. So it's 60% cotton and 40% linen. So this is what it looks like and it is because it's like it's pretty thin so what I plan to do is I'm going to hold this double I think on each one of these skeins is again or each one of these cones it's 227 grams and if I remember correctly it was like 1600 meters or yards which should be more than enough like if I if I wind up a cake uh for half of the amount that's on here I should be able to hold it double and make a tank top with plenty of yarn left over. So I'm really looking forward to that. The Ilana camisole is, it's got like cables and the cables kind of, um, like there's decreases. I don't like, I don't know how to describe it, but there is shaping around the bust, which I think is really cool. And like the cable pattern follows the shaping. And I thought that detail was really nice. And so it, when I was looking through patterns, that's something that really caught my eye. Um, the last time I knit something that had bust shaping, I didn't, yeah, I kind of, well, I think now I'm thinking because this is cotton and linen, it might stretch out and the bust shaping might not be, might not keep its shape. So I might have, actually, I might have to double or have another think about that. Um, yeah, now that I'm thinking out loud, the bust shaping in a cotton yarn. Well, we'll see how it goes. Cause maybe what I'll do is just have a little bit less ease and maybe that will, maybe that'll be okay. But I really like this color. Like this is, this is, I don't know what it is, but this color I like recently discovered looks really good on me. It looks really good on my, I feel like it looks really good with my skin tone. So I have a dress in this color. I have a couple of skirts in this color and it would be really cute to have a tank top in this color. I even have shorts in this color now. I kind of want, when I discovered it was my color, I kind of went a little overboard. And, well, I wouldn't say I bought a lot of clothes. I bought shorts, a skirt, shorts, two skirts and a dress, and they were all from secondhand stores. So anyways, so the next tank top that I want to knit is the Fleur Cami, and this is by Brianna Mason. And again, this is going to be knit out of the Maurice Broussard, uh, a cone of the cotton linen. And, oh, a little piece of fluff on there. And this is the color that I picked. It's like a, it's kind of like, oh, well, it's just a little bit darker than my, my skirt. But this is another color that I find, I find that looks really good on me. And I think it would be really cute again in a tank top. The Fleur Cami has uh, little eyelets on it, uh, like vertical, it's got vertical columns with some eyelets on it and it looks just super feminine, very dainty, and I think it'll be really cute as a tank top over like a skirt or a pair of shorts, uh, or even like could be over one, I have a, a just a plain black dress and it would be really cute over that as well, but I just really like this color and I actually... Yeah, I actually really like the combo of these two colors. It's like if I could make a top, like a, a tank top out of this and then like a skirt out of this or like shorts or something, that'd be really cute. So that's essentially like my wardrobe is I have pink tops and green bottoms. So well, I also have like beige tops and stuff. But yeah, so the, the Fleur Cami, I think that was like the first tank top that caught my eye because because it has like texture or well not texture but like the eyelets and stuff like I want I'm not I don't know I'm not opposed to stockinette or, or plain ribbed stuff but I really prefer to knit things with cables and lace and bobbles if there's bobbles in them 
because I like baubles too. Like anything with texture really, I'm really into that. Um, but I, I do appreciate for sure a nice plain stockinette garment. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with that. And sometimes that's what I need because like right now I have a lot of uh, lace and cabled things on the needles. So it's nice to have something that's just plain stockinette just to have a rest for my my brain. Um, yeah, okay. So the next tank top is the Anu tank top by Isabel Van Elsen. And the yarn I'm going to use for this is the Lion Brand True Boo. And I bought this last year. Pretty much everything that's here, well, aside from what I bought at at um, Fibers West, everything else was from Stash. Um, anyway, so I'm going to be using the Lion Brand True Boo in the lilac colorway. And what caught my eye about this particular tank top is the lace panel that's on the on the sides here. I had originally seen a tank top, and it had it had a lace and texture cable or no, sorry, lace and texture panels running down the front. Like it was uh, spaghetti straps and then it like opened up into like these two panels of lace and texture. And I really liked the look of that pattern. Um, but uh, the pattern itself is I think 15, about $15 Canadian. And like, I'm not opposed to paying like the price of a pattern. I was looking for something similar and so that's how I found the a new tank top. Um, and so when I saw the pictures, the cable is actually like on the on the sides here, and I thought that was actually really nice because it gives like a plain um, stockinette front here, and then some detail, some interest along the sides here. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I saw like again, Ravelry recommended uh, or said that this yarn could be a recommendation. So I think there was a couple other people that knit in this yarn. And this is the 100% uh, bamboo from Rayon, or Rayon from Bamboo, sorry. And I have also, I didn't, I didn't come up with plans for this, but I also have the True Boo in this like navy, not even, not really navy blue, but it's kind of like a, I mean, well, it's called navy, but I had this left over from that dress thing that I crocheted. So if I have time and I really like the pattern, I might knit it again in the in the navy. So we'll see how that goes. All right. Uh, so I, oh, and then I'm almost done with camisoles. The next one I want to knit is the camisole number four. And this is by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And I believe, again, Ravelry recommended because someone else knit it in this color, or in this yarn, and I have this in stash, is the Manos del Uruguay Milo. And this is 65% wool and 35% linen. And I've had this in my stash for at least, I don't know, I probably bought this in 2018. I originally bought three colors, a purple that I knit, I think the gelato tank top last year, which I need to take apart and re-knit. And then I like, so I bought three colors, the blue, this variegated and a purple, all matching to knit a shawl, but I never did get around to it. And so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the variegated skein because I don't, I don't think it's going to, I don't know, I might make a bag out of it or something. But this is the color I'm going to knit the camisole, which one? Number four? Camisole number four. And I've only got the one skein in this color. It's 380 yards or 350 meters, so it might might be a pretty cropped tank top. We'll see. I mean, I might get a waist length one out of it. I'm not sure if it's knit top down or bottom up. If it's knit top down, I can just knit until I run out of yarn or until it's the length that I want. If it's bottom up, I'll just have to measure it against something else that I have to figure out how how long I can make it before I have to split for the front and back. So, again, I think this, like, it kind of has a little bit of heathering in it, too. It doesn't really show up much on the camera, but I think because of the linen in it, it kind of gives it that um, heathered effect. So I'm really looking forward to that. I bought one of the other camisoles, the, the one that's just the plain ribbing all the way across. 
And I knit that up once, but I, I made the mistake of knitting it with mohair held together with mohair. Mo held a yarn held together with mohair. And I, I don't know, you know, uh, one thing I will say is in my, in my early knitting days, oh, that was even like two years ago that I did that, or maybe it was, yeah, it was like a couple years ago that I did that. I just kind of knit whatever I wanted with whatever yarn that I had or whatever I wanted to without fully thinking through like how the yarn will feel, how it'll knit up, like how it will wear in the weather that I'm knitting the garment for. So I'm trying to be a lot more intentional, intentional, oh my gosh, a lot more intentional about that this year and going forward. And so that's why I like, I'm really trying to utilize my stash in a way that uh, when I upload the yarn to Ravelry and I start looking at projects, it can start recommending me projects to knit with the yarn that I have that other people have knit the same project in that yarn so I can see how it's turned out. Um, yeah, so. Okay, and then, so there's three more, three more things I want to knit. The next one is Calion, and this again is another pattern by Samantha Stater. And... Oh, I just lost the tag for that. And I'm planning to do this. I have this, again, this came from a D stash from a friend that had a bunch of this, like, just random yarn. This is a uh, Fun Knits Quadra Island. Oh, from Quadra Island, BC. So it's from my province. Oh, it's from the yarn shop on Quadra Island, I guess. And it's 100% silk, 500 meters each. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold these double and I'm going to knit the Cali on. And basically this is a, a kind of a, I'm not sure what style of top it is, but essentially it has an open back where it's connected just at the collar and then it like opens at the back. So there's like, yeah, there's lace, two lace panels on the back. I believe this is knit top down. So I think you like, I don't know, maybe you knit back and forth and then you go back later and pick up for the collar. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'm pretty sure when I read the description, it did say top down and you do the, I don't think it's knit in panels, maybe, I don't know, I'll have to take another look at that, but essentially it's got lace panels on the back and stockinette on the front and I really like that look and I'm really curious to make, like, because I made the ram vest earlier this year and that has the split, like, high up on the, like, where you attach the yarn, oh my gosh, you attach the armholes and that's when you layer the fabric and um, knit the armholes and that keeps the the split there. So I'm thinking that's how it's going to work with the Calion is you knit the the back and the front and then you can like you knit the lace and the stockinette and then you go back and you you layer the fabric and then come back and pick up all the stitches for the neckline. So that's what I'm assuming. It could be it could be different. That would make the most sense. All right. So yeah, and I'm hoping that 500 meters doubled up or a thousand meters between the two yarns doubled up will be enough. If anything, I could always make it just a little short top. I, I'm not. I'm really not opposed to cropping things this summer. Um, two more projects that are not garments. The first one is called Written on My Heart Cross Body Bag. And this is actually a crochet pattern and this is by Kristen Holloway. And I was looking, I had all this like leftover Karen cotton funnel cakes from when I made my Provence, Provence top a couple, what was it, last year or the year before. So I got, I had I think four of these cotton cakes. It's really heavy, it's like a worsted, it's a heavy worsted. But I've got two full cakes and then I have like these little leftovers here just a little bit. It's got this funky texture to it. I like, uh, yeah. So I was trying to find projects on Ravelry that that weren't garments because my the top that I knit out of this is just a little too heavy. <laughs> it doesn't drape very well. It's just a little too thick. So I was like, well, what can I make out of this really thick cotton yarn? And I thought, oh, uh, like an accessory would work. And so I was looking at bags and I found this crocheted bag and I'm hoping I can just try and use up as much yarn as possible. And I'm just going to pick a hook that I'm like the pattern obviously recommends a hook size 
and a yarn size yarn weight and I'm just going to pick whatever hook works well with this particular yarn and however big the bag ends up is the way it ends up if it's like a big crossbody bag that's fine I can't imagine it's going to be very small because this yarn is pretty thick so I'm really looking forward to that and like of course this color like having a bag in this color would just be super cute and I'm I'm wondering too like all the bits and bobs like the the strap and the clasp maybe a zipper I'm not sure but all the extra bits that you put on a purse and even like the fabric lining I'm I'm not sure if the pattern has all that stuff in there but I'm I'm curious to try doing all that stuff so we'll see when I finish the bag if I want to line it with fabric or if I want to put some clasps on it or a zipper or like a, a proper strap on it or I can just crochet a strap but I, the bag itself looks really cute and it I think it'll I'm pretty proficient I mean well, I wouldn't say I'm proficient in crochet but I did crochet for a number of years before I started knitting so I'm fairly decent at following patterns or following instructions with with crochet it's just piecing everything together sometimes it takes a while even in knitting it takes a while for me to like visualize how all these little pieces go together to make a per particular shape so I'm really looking forward to that I, like having an accessory to knit on or sorry having an accessory to crochet over the summer would be really cute and it's something that I can use year round so when I'm not feeling the garments I can knit oh my gosh I can crochet on this accessory all right so now I'm on the final plan for spring and summer and this is just kind of this particular plan is just gonna be something that I have on the needles when I feel like it uh, it's a very small project it's called the scrap bag by Annabelle Chan and I don't have any yarn specifically for this but I figure I would use leftover scraps to knit little knit pouches like little knit bags it's basically like a little drawstring bag so I depending on how big I want to make it and how much yarn I left I have left over I kind of want to make yeah I'm not sure what I'm gonna put in them but I guess it depends on the the, the yarn that I use because if I have if I have cotton yarn left over I could make little soap pouches like with this pattern and put my soap in there I don't know but I'm sure I, I do have a handful of crystals that are just kind of like laying around my bedroom that I would like to have a little bag to keep them in so that would probably be the first thing I knit the bag for and then I you know I have little knickknacks of just random odds and ends of things that kind of hang around my bedroom and my just my living area in general that would be more appropriate to be together in a small bag <laughs> anyways so that is that's pretty much all my plans as of right now for the spring and the summer and I I hope that you have found these inspirational or like have inspired you to also look for patterns that would suit your aesthetic or like the yarn that you already have basically what I did was I spent an entire afternoon actually I think I spent like two afternoons I would say like several hours a piece um, looking up patterns and I think I first looked at patterns and I ha added a bunch to my favorites and then the next afternoon I logged all of my stash or like all my summer yarns or like all my warm garment yarns whatever into Ravelry and then I went back through my favorites and I picked out 12 projects that because I figure four eight 12. I figured if I could knit four projects or complete four projects a month between May, June, and July that would be appropriate for like having garments for the summer for the spring and the summer I guess May, June, July yeah um, and then I went through and I narrowed everything down and I started adding things to my queue and then once I had about 20 projects in my queue I went back through them and looked for projects that had yarn as, that I could associate with them that I had in my stash and so it really it worked out really well for me and I highly recommend even because originally I was gonna go 
all out and organize my entire stash and, and um, add all of it into my Ravelry stash page. But that was just a little too overwhelming. So I, what I did, again, I just picked out all my cotton, linen, hemp, anything, anything like with silk that would be suitable for um, summer and spring garments. And I put them all in this bin and I said, okay, that I can do. I can add all these into Ravelry and get these done. And so I plan to do the same thing again in maybe August or September. And so that's when I will do another video like this where I go through as much stash as I can and pick out another 12 projects for the next four or next three months or so or like from September to the end of the year and yeah I think that's it <laughs> sorry I feel like I'm waffling on now but yeah I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope yeah you find some time to go through Ravelry and peruse the patterns that are out there definitely use the search filters uh, to find the yardage that you're looking for, maybe the type of garments you're looking for, accessories or anything like that. It's definitely worth the time if you have free time in the evening, even if you're watching, I don't know, if you've got the TV on or whatever and you're not needing to pay 100% attention, just scrolling on your phone through Ravelry, um, through the patterns and stuff can be, and just like, yeah, add them to your favorites and then go back and start adding the ones that you really like to your queue and then get your yarn and then narrow it down even further through your queue to match the yarn. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now I'm just repeating myself. Okay. So yes, my next video should be another project update. So that'll be in a couple weeks from now. And yeah, hopefully I'll have cast on some of these projects so I can show them off. And until next time, happy knitting. Bye.